from the order to tell us this. Uh, its relationship to Britain, its force, philosophically. All right, so we uh, talked about it a bit this morning. Uh, we read the report. Uh, but now we're going to hear from the man himself. Uh, for the worst of it, so to speak. Sorry, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> so Charles has been a blogger uh, for a number of years now in Burnham. He's operated a blog. Uh, and uh, now it has over 2 million hits. So this, this isn't a, a small thing. A lot of people read this blog, a lot of people check it out. Uh, and it is part of the media. Uh, he is quite often recognized as part of the media, at media scrums, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, when I say blogger, I'm also saying journalist in the sense. So, uh, I don't know how much more to say, but uh, I think I'll just turn it over to Charles. He can do much better job. Thank you. 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 Uh, I would like to say a massive beaucoup to, to uh, Nicole to have the opportunity to talk to 50 future crooks. I mean, sorry, sorry, sorry. I apologize. 50 future uh, politicians. 50 future lawyers. There. There. I know I should have took my Ritalin before I came here. Anyway, I have half an hour. Uh, I have ADHD. I was diagnosed with that about 15 years ago. You all have laptops. You could mark whatever I say, mark it down, Google it. I'll say go to my old blog, but I can't because the city of Fredericton had to shut down two weeks, a month, about a month ago. We'll get to that later. Um, but we'll try, I'll give you an a introduction about myself and we'll just take, take, take it from there. Half an hour, right? Yep. I try to debate for an hour, but anyway, we'll try. Okay, I was born in Mermont Cook. And uh, it's a small town outside of uh, Mutton. And, uh, you know, I knew there was something wrong with me. That just, just to stay there like you guys in the classroom and listen, that's not my style because I was always going, going, and going, and going. It was sort of known as the, as the town fool. But <laughs> as Charles LeBlanc, I, my mother is from Glasgow, Scotland. She came from Glasgow when she was 15 years old and landed in Mermont Cook and married a, my father that's a pure Acadian. So I'm half pure Scottish, and I'm half pure Acadian. I would have wished this gene on my worst enemy. <laughs> if you've seen the movie Braveheart, have you seen it? No, it's all true. <laughs> <laughs> We're not scared of nothing. Hey, not bad, I came up with that, it's not even Mark. Okay, anyway, so we turn around, and I, people with ADHD, they speak before thinking. They always speak before thinking. They can come up with the stupidest stupidest thing and you say what the hell did I say that and I'm sure I will say that after I'm done with this lecture which I haven't done in a couple of years but you're known I asked my father I even told my father I like to be a journalist you're too stupid to be a journalist you're too stupid I hear the word stupid all all the time and thank God I had the size to fight back and then I started to write letters to the editor the Irving paper and then they, people look at that, well, look at that, look what Charles wrote. Now, Charles is not, is not crazy. Look, look, it makes sense. So the letters to the editor made me feel like somebody. I'm not stupid. I just have ADHD and I got a big mouth. Well, I'm in the right place. Look, 50 people are, listen to me. So I wrote 500 letters to the newspaper. And so I end up, my, my uncle and aunt, uh, Al LeBlanc and Teresa, they're the parents that I never had. And he got me a life. I worked at a shipyard in St. John for 15 years. I know I was writing letters. And, I mean, everybody wanted to know who this Charles Obama was. Even the Irvings were afraid. I remember when I met Arthur Irving and Jake. Oh, you're the guy. You're the guy. And I was writing letters against them, and I was working for Irving. But I belonged to a union. So anyway, thank God for that. Um, I try to be a good rat, a good suck hole, and a good uh, whatever, but I'm not good at it. So I speak my mind. And that's why people like us don't work. So, um, so next thing you know, I found out my uncle approached me and said, Charles, you got a mental disorder and you don't even know it. I said, really? You found out what's wrong with me after all these years. What do I have? ADHD, ADD. So what the hell is that? It's, uh, give me a book. You mean I'm not crazy, stupid, or lazy. 
And I read it, and the brain is a fantastic tool. It has millions and millions of brain cells. And it opened those brain cells, and it said, hey, I have ADD. So we seen a neurologist, and then my uncle says, they were there, and then he asked, him, he asked me a question about violence, violence, violence. And I told my uncle, I said, he said, my uncle's outside. So he said, has Charlie been in trouble with the law for assault or stuff like that? He said, I know of three people that Charlie almost killed. That I know of, because he's from St. John, I'm from Vermont. I was a fighter. So he said, you don't have ADD, you have ADHD. Oh, okay, great. It was just like a million tons of steel that let go off my shoulder. I had ADHD. So my front, the Irving Media, put my picture on the front page, the Telegraph Journal, Irving St. John paper, I call it, and said, Charles LeBlanc deals with ADHD. Next thing you know, I receive about 50 phone, I've got like a half an hour there, I'm going over, overboard. Um, I had 50 phone calls on the phone of kids, of parents crying on the phone how their kids are treated in the school system. So they turn around and they receive these phone calls. So I see Bernard Lord, remember him? Now Bernard Lord used to be the former premier of this province. And when he was running for premier, I told him, we got a problem with Ritland. But, but, oh, I got so many phone calls. I, when, once I'm in power, we will study the issue. Okay, no problem. I'll talk to you after the election. I showed up, and then uh, I seen him, got premier, Bernard, Ritland. Oh, Charles, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, so I showed up in a tent in front of the legislator, in front of him. So the media and the government looks, the government looks at the media. The guy is an idiot. Just ignore him. It will go away. They forgot about the half Scottish part. <laughs> so December was cold. I was still there. Say so he's going to die there. But I had people. I was, the support was incredible. And I collected 10,000 signatures. And then I turn around. Wait, they allow me inside the ledge. I wasn't allowed when I was inside on, on the front step. And on the front of the ledge. And they give them a petition, 10,000 signatures. Both parties gave me a standing ovation. They were so happy that I was leaving. They had to listen to me for six months. So I was a neighbor, so then I left. But unfortunately, I'm a Frenchman. So when I live in a tent, for six months, something's gonna happen. So what happened is I met a girl here. And then I had to tell the girl and say, John, bye-bye. And I love Fredericton. So I, when I came back 11 days later, they, come, they said, he's back. So I started, we started, I started to go around and I was writing updates, sending emails to everybody, bureaucrats, politicians, of my opinion. So somebody approached me and said, do you want to be a blogger? Blogger, what's that? So he explained to me, I said, no, no, I'd like to have these emails. Send these. It was so bad, my emails. The government had a block, omazon at, uh, at yahoo.com. A bureaucrat said, I'm not receiving your updates and, and anymore. Then I, I Check their phone, their email, then they say, oh my God, they blocked me. Uh -huh. So the media said, well, no problem, just change email. That's not even there. You see how big this, I'm gonna do this half an hour. Oh no, no, okay. So anyway, turn around, they unblock. I said, I want my email, omazon at Yahoo unblock. And sure, then the media call, then they change it, they change their mind. I could be freely to send an email to any politician that I wanted. So go into the blogging. What happened if you read an email, and you delete it, it's over. It's over. Blogging, you blog, if I blog a politician, a counselor, won't, won't mention no names, in the city of Fredericton, once you Google his name, the, counsel, the name will come out on my blog. And that was a good way to spread the message. So I started blogging. I said, sure, no problem. So what happened, then the re, uh, there was a, a, a two, 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 I started blogging. Then the media looked at me, then I had this, just, I was, there was no video, just writing and taking pictures. So in 2006, in the early summer, there was a, a protest called Immigrant Without Borders. I got the first time that, that, I, that I started. Immigrant Without Borders. They went around walking, then they were stopped by the police. And I remember there was somebody that was taking pictures. And the police look at him and he says, are you a journalist? I was surprised. You know, like you have, he's, he's just a guy taking pictures. So the next thing you know, the police arrive from the city hall and they put the immigrants, uh, the, the, the protesters on the ground. And a friend of mine took a picture and put it on my blog. CTV grabbed a hold of that. ATV was the news of the day. 
and Vernica, Ver, Vernica, I forgot her name. Anyway, she put it, it was a headline news, racism charge against the Fredericton police force. So, next thing you know, here I am the week after, I'm going to Atlantica. Oh, he's going to Atlantica, huh? Okay, St. John. That was a nerving conference. I showed up there. Let's see, you know it's about 30, 40 people with masks. We're not going to mention no names. But anyway, with masks and just start running toward, toward the conference. Me, I said, oh my God, this is great. So I take my camera. And next thing you know, I was pushed. And I look at the guy, I said, what are you doing? The cop. I said, I'm an independent journalist. I had no time to explain what was a blogger. I didn't even have the blogger jacket on. I said, you're under arrest. Under arrest for what? For obstruction. I said, obstruction of what? So next thing you know, they dragged me on the floor 50 feet, put me on the ground, just choked me, I couldn't breathe, took my camera away, gave me a black eye, put me in jail for about four hours. Once I showed up, then I wrote, they give me my camera, and I look at my, all my pictures, they were all gone. The first one, the St. John Police, I'm sorry to say first one, police force. The St. John Police Force deleted all my pictures. The evidence was gone. So I knew deep inside the Fredton Police Force called the St. John Police Force, going to Atlanta, Colorado. Get him! So let me pay back his, you know what? So anyway, at the end, I showed up in court. The judge, what's his name? Uh, there was so many, so many things that happened since then. So. Was that? I believe it was William Dixon. No, it was William McCarroll, like telling a future lawyer that he's wrong. I hope this. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. The other time you Yeah, yeah, no, I know, I know. We, we are getting there. The, so, okay, I got, oh my God, I got 25, 25 minutes. Anyway, 20 minutes. So anyway, at the end, uh, legal aid, I arrived there. You're right, the, the judge McCarroll told me, he says, how do you plead? I said, Your Honor, I don't understand why I'm here. Did somebody talk to you? No. Duty counsel talk to you? No. So, well, we're gonna have a recess. This old lawyer, female, told me, sit down in the room. I said, what? This is the charge, obstruction, blah, 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 and you don't have the right to a lawyer. It's a summary conviction. You are not gonna go to jail, you have no right to a lawyer. And I said, excuse me? So the bottom line is, what, can you represent yourself? I don't know nothing ab about the law. Can you afford a lawyer? I'm on social assistance. I'm not proud of it, but that's the way it is. Um, so next thing you know, I'm in court. Next thing you know, the judge, McCarroll, said, how long is this going to take? The, the prosecutor, she was cleaning her nails, <laughs> half an hour. Uh, no, she said a couple of half a day, Your Honor. I stood up, half a day. It's going to take at least a week. Everybody look at me, a week for this? So next thing you know, I can't go into no details. I arrive in Fredericton, Harold Doherty, you know him, he's a lawyer. If he's a, uh, if you write uh, Harold Doherty, you Google. He's an activist, he has a severe son, uh, autistic. And he approached me, big guy. He said, Charles, what's going on in St. John? I said, oh, never mind that. They told me I had no right to a lawyer. I fought with the legal aid, with uh, David Porter was, was his name. Bernard Richard, the ombudsman of the day, even sent a letter saying, I need help. I need, more, I need help in more ways than one, but this time I need help for a lawyer. So at the end, Harold, I told Harold, and Harold said, what did they say in their disclosure? No, then I told them, I said, when I'm done with them in the courtroom, the judge was saying, Mr. LeBlanc, you've been watching too many medlocks. So he said, Charles, what did they say in their disclosure? Disclosure, what's that? So he quickly realized I didn't even know what was going on. So he said, Charles, let me represent you. I said, listen, Harold, I'm broke. He said, no, you help us through your blog with autistic issues. But it's, it's our turn to help you. He arrived there. He made, if there was a trial, it was so, he made them look like monkeys. Because what's happening, the workplace and the court is like any workplace. Everybody knows each other's style. The cops, the lawyers, the prosecutor. Then they socialize, they romance, and like that. But anyway, they turn around. They didn't know this guy, this tall, this big. And at the end, I was acquitted. The funny part about it, there was nothing in the Irving paper. Once the Irving paper seen that the cops were lying on the stand, they left. And that if it would have been found guilty, would have been right on the front page. Idiot blogger, idiot blogger found guilty. But nothing there. If you Google New York Times and Charles LeBlanc, I seen that a reporter said, oh, my story's not important enough to be in the paper. He said, I'll be in the paper tomorrow morning. I said, really? I'm going to make the evil Irving newspaper? 
And then he says, yeah, I said, is it because my story was in the New York Times this morning that it has to be in the Irving paper the next day? And sure enough, it was in the New York Times. But anyway, I was acquitted, and people were just saying, this, is he a court-appointed journalist? So, okay, oh my God, I'm sorry. So then I was, then I got here, the legislator, and then I was banned for life from the ledge. I said, what am I banned for? Now, you harass people. Who did I harass? They said, we don't have to tell you. I said, once you start convicting people without providing the evidence, isn't that fascism? They said, we don't care. You're banned f for life. At the end, I was banned because of a murder, suicide. Val Kuo, she was a member of the Liberal Party, but I can't get into that. It's, it's, it's the same thing as what I just said about St. John. So then, after that, then in, in, uh, in, uh, in April, April 23rd, 2009, I was arrested at the ledge for covering a protest to save the Mattaquite Park. So I showed up, let's say, you know, Andrew McDonald, a cop from the Fredton Police Force. What's happening is the Fredton Police Force worked for Dan Bissier. Dan Bissier is the sergeant at arms at the ledge. He's a former RCMP officer. He's even the cop that got Hatfield with marijuana. So he's very, you know, so then at the end, this guy, he realized the cops will do anything for him for money. The cops were overtime. They paid money at the ledge. They follow his every he fo they follow his every orders. So at the end, they arrested me. I showed up at the police station. Make a long story short, they said, "Okay, La uh, Lafleur was his name. Okay, Charles, here's those papers. Sign this. You'll be out of here in five minutes. Okay. Oh, there's conditions." What's the conditions? You don't have the right to talk to one MLA pending your trial. Say, excuse me. I know some of my best friends, like Abel LeBlanc and all that, are MLAs. He says, if you don't sign that, you're going to go to jail. I say, you know what? I, I hear some sad stories about the prison in St. John in Black River Road. What better way to find out what's going on than being the inside? Arrest me. <laughs> So that was the end of that. This, this guy showed up with a big book, law school, and they, they said, oh, get out of here. I said, oh, what about those conditions? Get out of here. So they thought I was going to say, oh, okay, no problem. Well, we'll get to that later. And then in July, what happened? Then the, the cop on July 6th, 2009, um, the guy that arrested me was suddenly fired, Andrew McDonald. He even told me, he stopped me in the street. And he said, you have ruined my life. But he was offered an early retirement package. So he was very upset. I said, hey, you should have left me, left me alone. So now at that, when he was let go on July, on April 23rd, we're not going to do this. Anyway, on uh, April 23rd, 2009, on July 6th, 2009, two or three months later, this is where everything changed. No, uh, the charges were dropped on July 6th, I'm sorry, in 09. They were dropped against me, um, and the cop, Andrew McDonald, was fired. So I was arrested at the legislature, but the charges were dropped. Sorry, I can't get the detail. Two weeks later, this is where the problem started. I filmed the soldier that was being beat up by the cops in front of the IROC. I just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. I was across, you see something going on. I took my camera, I started filming, and on Monday, I didn't know really what I had. It sort of like, didn't pay attention. The next uh, Monday, CBC came out with this soldier, black eye and everything. Then I called Jacques uh, Portois. I said, you better come here, I got something here. They said, oh my God, there's, there, there, there's the evidence. So what happened? After that, uh, the uh, police, after the video came out and to uh, tell the Stafford was acquitted in, uh, two, two years later, a uh, year and a half later, the cops were so nice to me, it was sickening. They would see me on the street, hi Charles. I mean, I said, they're gonna make me look like a rat. So they even acknowledged me as media. They announce a news conference, they invite me, come for coffee, Charles. They were very nice. They were, you know, buddies. So then, next thing you know, 
he was acquitted. Uh, Stanford was acquitted. I got it wrong here. On June, in June, on June sixth. See, that's why you got to reread what you write. I get an ADHD style. Then, when he was acquitted, two two weeks later, Wuzzle, Fred Wuzzle, a cop, friend of police force, Quebecois. I'll keep my opinion to myself. Read my blog. Oh, sorry, I don't have a blog in, 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 anymore. Wuzzle called me over and said. Oh, Charles, Charles, come here, come here. There was four police cruisers by King's Place. I said, what's this? I was media. I was an hour in media. Somebody, somebody died. Oh, uh, I want to give you a ticket. What? Are you riding a bicycle on the sidewalk and no helmet? I took my camera. Up. What? What did you say? I said, you want the service of France or English? And I told him, Shiak. Yak my mom caught my father Shiak. Anyway, that didn't go too well. But at the end, I got mad. I can't go into detail. I, I got the ticket on June 23rd. On July 9th, there I was, 11 o'clock at night, walking the street. Oh my God. Anyway, I was walking the street, then the cop stopped, says, Here's a ticket. What's this? You were seen riding your bicycle on the sidewalk uh, eight days ago. Here's a ticket. I was seen. By who? Then at the end, I found out it was Dan Bissier. And he said, here's a ticket, $140. I'm on social assistant, right? Not proud of it, but that's the way it is. So I turned around and said, OK, $140. What am I going to do? So I found out it was Dan Bissier. I said, you could do that? Oh, yes, third party information. So I showed up at the police station the next day. I said, hi, my name is Charles LeBlanc. We know. He said, I want to show you something. Dan Bissier's boss, Paul Bichot, and the speaker of the house, Dale Graham, I had a video and a picture of them jaywalking. I said, here, I expect you people to give them a ticket, like you did to me for phone call and all that. So the next day, I said, did you give them a ticket? It's on the chief desk. I said, ooh, there's a double standard here. One for the filthy rich, one for the filthy poor. So you know I haven't shut up since I've been here. You, can you imagine me with a blowhorn? <laughs> <laughs> so, I showed up with a blowhorn. Have you seen the movie, The Ten Commandments? No. 1956, Charles Heston. And then he shows up. I look, I look back. Yeah, 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 with the blowhorns. Fascism! Bah, bah, bah. So, the next thing you know, they said, I said, Would you, I walk inside, I said, Would you please give them a ticket? The people in the area has had enough. You know, have mercy on the people. Like, not let my people go. I'm not Moses there. I'm not saying that. <laughs> Trust me. But have some sympathy. It's on the chief desk. So I went on for about a month. The blowhorn. Fascism! <laughs> so at the end, they arrest me. It was all set up. They grabbed me. There was about 15 cops lined up. And then they brought me in jail. And then they said, okay. You that was there for four hours. This is the problem we're having here. Then they said, oh, do you have a lawyer? Yeah, like, we were rat. Oh, sorry. Uh, Sergeant Matt Myers. Go, do you have a lawyer, buddy? No, I don't have a lawyer. I can't afford it. Then suddenly they put you in the boot. Make you feel important. You have a mental disorder. You're on social assistant. You got no money. Well, it could be any one of you. Make you feel important. Here, here's your lawyer. Next thing you know, lawyer. Well, don't say anything. Uh, just, uh, but I didn't do anything wrong. Then, oh, don't tell them anything, don't say anything. So, did you talk to your lawyer? Yeah, I did. Okay, in the cell. You stayed there for four hours. So those cops, so-called cops, keep my opinion to myself, read my blog, oh, my blog is shut down, sorry. You look, said, look at his record. He has ADHD, oh, he's bipolar, or whatever. And look, he's a smoker. I quit four years ago. So, he's a smoker, that's a, that's a plus. So they bring him out. Look, buddy, sign the bottom line. And you're out of here in five minutes, buddy. Five minutes, just sign the bottom line. Then you say, okay. But they read you the condition. But you don't give it down. You don't sign anything just to get the hell out of that cell. And one of the condition is you don't have the right to fart on King Street. I mean, I'm, I know I'm going a little bit uh, sarcastic. But this condition, you can't follow. They know it's impossible. It's to put you in the system. I'm getting wound up here. So next thing you know, um, so then we went on, and then uh, I, was, I was arrested. I was two days in jail. Like the judge said, Judge Julian Dixon, he goes, uh, they want to say, OK, we want Mr. LeBlanc not to be in the block 300. I said, Your Honor, I don't know if you know what a blogger is, but I got a deal with City Hall. Right, Greg? Are you falling asleep? OK. 
And so anyway, I got a deal with City Hall. I mean, I'm a, I don't know if you know what a, what a blogger is. Let me explain to you what a blogger is. He even let me explain. He knew exactly who, who, who I was. So the next thing you know, they said, we don't want you to be in the corner of Westmoreland and King. But it was scary. They grabbed me. The police wanted me to sign papers. I wouldn't sign. And then there was nobody for once I would have loved to see Don McPherson, the, the Irving reporter for the Fredericton paper. I would have loved There was nobody there. Yeah, it was prosecutors, one duty counsel that didn't say much. And then I said, oh my God. So then I said, Your Honor, I can't sign the paper not to be in the corner of the Westmoreland King. I have to go across the Westmoreland Bridge. That's the only way to get out of the city. You don't want to sign that? Two days in jail. Because I could have been in a car and they would have had by judge order thing not to be allowed in the corner of Westmoreland and King. And it's foolish. They're, they're the cops got too much time on their hand. This is not a city. This is a big town. And they're, they're bored. And they were good. That's a, sorry, in my opinion. So I turned around. I pleaded guilty uh, January 6th. I uh, we show up in court. January 16, 2012. I showed up in court, my supporters. <clears throat> I'm making this, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but there was cops all over the place. And then they were saying, okay, what are you guys going to do? Matt Myers was there. What are you guys going to do? What are you guys going to do? So my supporters were telling me, Charles, it's time to turn the page, move on, move on. We had a meeting, the prosecutor, plead guilty. You'll get a conditional discharge. Just plead guilty. Then my supporters and the cops, everything's going to be all right. Don't worry about it. Everything's going to be fine. There was something that wasn't right. I had no right to a lawyer. There was no lawyer there. So next thing I said, okay, can I leave with my head high? Yes, Charles, you can leave with your head high. How am I doing? Good. Now, seven two, minutes. Oh boy. So seven minutes? What yes. I got? So anyway, so at the end, sorry. So at the end, what happened? Um, I was in court. I said, we're pretty guilty. The prosecutor said, okay, we're going to have a victim impact assessment. And I said, victim impact assessment, that wasn't part of the deal. So next thing you know, they, uh, they uh, said that, uh, that the, the, uh, I said, no, 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 no. I said, victim impact assessment, if you had people stay, oh, I hear his voice, his voice in the, the blowhorn. I can't sleep at night. So then I said, no, 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 that wasn't part of the deal. So then the, uh, the judge said, we're going to have a recess. The recess lasted about two minutes. The cop, Bobby Simmons, said, no, no, Charles. Nobody's going to testify, Charles. Everything's going to be all right, Charles. I said, what the hell is a cop in the courtroom telling me everything's going to be all right? There's something that wasn't right. So at the end, we pleaded guilty. My supporters hugged me, turned the page. Everything's fine. Three days later, I was home. And I had this nice native right, sitting down. Then I said, whoops, hot in here. Let me, uh, let me open the window. I see eight, ten cops showing up. And the woman that told me everything's going to be all right, she led the raid over my place. Good morning, Charles. You're under arrest. To let the cops do the dirty work in the courtroom shouldn't be allowed. I only got five minutes left. So the bottom line here, it just, I was helped by two person supporters, uh, Tom Mann. And then after that, Tom Mann, after a while, was appointed <coughs> as deputy minister by the government. So he was gone. Then I had a lawyer, but he was busy. And then I was left Terry Sagan on CBC. He pushed the issue, pushed the issue. And then the CCLA arrived. Then next thing you know, they sent a letter of concern to Barry Midnight. Barry Midnight wouldn't, wouldn't acknowledge the CCLA. He said, oh yeah, okay, I'll have a review. But we'll do it in my terms. I'll choose the people that's going to be on that review. And uh, they never had somebody Nobody in New Brunswick has seen somebody from outside saying, this is not right. This is not what you should do. So at the end, Barry Midnight refused to answer. And the CCLA push it, push it. And then my charges, um, what's the other charge? Oh, the charges when they raided my place. They said, okay, he lives alone. It was a libel charge. But we got, he, he lives, okay, I'll get that to that later. Five minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was arrested when the charges were dropped of libel drop, I was arrested a week later at the legislature again. 
So the police, re and they assaulted me. And then once I showed up in court, and then I was in the hospital, that's another story. But then the RCMP took over the thing for my charge that they said they suggest that my charge should stay. Cops investigating cops, I don't think so. And then, uh, then suddenly they hired Bernard Richard to do a review. So I asked the city that suddenly when they announced to do the review, uh, Barry Midnight suddenly retires. He says it's just time to go. 49 years old, it's time to go. My God, I wish I could retire and use pension at 49. Not even a politician <clears throat> just that. So everything was going. Then the city of Fredericton, I asked, will you pay my fee for a lawyer? I'm not educated enough to talk about my charter rights. The city said no. So my lawyer with Tom Mann said, you have a, uh, have a good review. We're not going to talk to you. So the two main character, Wazo and me, never talked to Bernard Richard. He was paid $40,000. And he'd come out with this review, which I, they had a huge news conference. And I told my lawyer, we were there, I told my lawyer, I said, we're, what do you, uh, what do you think about, about